Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 6 for October the 11th, 2020. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Inclusive Love. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Overcoming Self-Interest. Our devotion reading is taken from the, uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verses 12 through 17. A background script is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, uh, chapter 6, verses 27 through 36, and we'll be studying today um, from Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. Our key verse reads, I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. That's taken from Luke chapter uh, 6 verses 27 and 28 from the King James Version. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore Jesus' teaching about what it means to love our enemies. Secondly, to reflect on times when you felt hate toward others and were hated by others. And then thirdly, to engage in ways to love your enemies. We have two outlines today that will be uh, part of our lesson text. Um, the first outline is entitled, Refuse to Retaliate. And our second outline is entitled, Emulate the Father. And we certainly are privileged today in thanking God for another opportunity to be able to share our lesson with you today. We thank God for all of our listeners, uh, those of uh, Pleasant Green as well as others uh, who have uh, taken part in this lesson. And uh, we are thanking God and praising God that we're still here in the land of the living, that we're able to still engage in God's word, that we can become better uh, in our communities, better in, uh, among our family members. and. In the, in the world at large. And so we want to continue uh, studying God's Word. We know it's very important, it's essential that we continue to edify ourselves in the Word of God and we uh, admonish you today to get your Bible and um, uh, be prepared to uh, take some scripture notes and, and the like that we're going to share with you today. Uh, we certainly want to be able to uh, benefit from this sermon uh, taken from uh, the gospel according to um, Luke chapter 6 verses 27 through 36. I want to read just a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson and then we're going to get into these uh, these outlines. But the excerpt um, print passage for this lesson includes uh, a parallel content found in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthews chapter 5 through 7. So, following an encounter with scribes and Pharisees about the Sabbath, uh, Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11, Jesus went to a mountainous area to pray and then chose 12 of his disciples to be apostles or special uh, messengers or his personal personally chosen representative. Uh, we also want to note the fact that um, the love Jesus was speaking about in this passage is agape love, uh, loving even the unloving uh, or un the unlovely uh, by the choice of the lover to be a loving person despite the merits of the person to be loved. Uh, so we hope that you understand that uh, uh, basically what we're saying is that Jesus is commanding us to love unconditionally. Um, and so we want to keep that in mind today. I want to, since we are uh, sort of comparing uh, both sermons uh, from Matthew, Matthew's Gospel um, uh, and also Luke's, I want to go back very quickly to Matthew chapter 5. Uh, this is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And I'm using the theme from uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 
to kind of help us understand that what Jesus is looking for and what he is commanding is out of the norm. Um, but uh, this is the theme for Matthew's Gospel, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Um, Jesus is talking here. He says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And so we want to make sure that we understand that uh, Jesus is um, uh, tackling some issues, some teachings, uh, particularly with the scribes and Pharisees uh, in Matthew's Gospels that had kind of taken uh, the Old Testament passages out of context. Uh, and so Jesus coming on the scene sought to set those things uh, right, if you will, or to teach the proper context to teach what he was looking for. And so that brings us to uh, Luke's gospel, as we said, which is similar uh, to um, the Sermon on the Mount. Luke's gospel presents Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, so a little bit different uh, concept there. But nevertheless, the, the, the commands are the same. And it's important to understand that in our culture, or even in the culture where Jesus was teaching these principles, uh, uh, if we don't adhere to this kind of, of teaching from Christ, then we know that we're going to have a society uh, in chaos. Uh, we're going to have dysfunctional society, uh, dysfun dysfunctional culture. Uh, and this is the thing that Jesus was uh, seeking to address. And so as we get into this lesson today, uh, Jesus was already encountering uh, issues with, uh, with the Pharisees concerning uh, the Sabbath. Uh, and so Jesus took the opportunity to, to uh, draw those away who would, who would hear. We're going to unpack some things for you today to help you understand that uh, this is a challenge, if you will, of the message that uh, 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 we seek to engage our audience. Every message, uh, I believe, uh, should have a challenge to that audience. And this is where we find ourselves in this text uh, for this lesson today. So let's pick this up from uh, Luke chapter 6 verses 27 through 31 and we're talking about refuse to retaliate and this is Jesus talking here in verse 27 the Bible says but I say unto you which hear love your enemies do good to them which hate you bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you and unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek offer also the other and him that taketh away thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also verse 30 give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods ask uh, them not again and then verse 31 and as ye would that men should do to you do ye also uh, to them likewise. So we want to talk about this passage of scripture here and, and uh, you might uh, appreciate the fact that uh, uh, this commandment that came out of Jesus mouth was and, and still is counterintuitive. Uh, it, it, it's contrary to how we think as human beings. Uh, it's contrary. It doesn't seem to make sense that that we should love people that that hate us. It doesn't make sense to the human mind that we should do good or we should uh, 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 not seek to retaliate against people who have wronged us. But it should be understood as we talk about this hearing, uh, uh, the one who hears is not merely capable of making it uh, making out audible sounds or, or speech 
Rather, hearing requires understanding and more critically obedience uh, to what is heard. I want you to look at Luke chapter 11 verse 28 and also James chapter 1 uh, verse 22. But this hearing is about uh, the receptivity to the message and a willingness to transform one's life in accordance with the demands of the message and so if you can appreciate what Jesus is saying here uh, uh, there is a demand um, if you will of this message that we engage uh, uh, in the way that uh, uh, Jesus is, 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 is prescribing here uh, and, and, and the basis of that as I was thinking about this uh, and, and as we would understand well I don't, I don't believe I can do that I don't believe I can love my enemies or I can do good to them that uh, that hate you or hate me uh, but we must never forget that we have obtained mercy and now uh, we are required to give such mercy uh, it should be understood and I want to I want to look at a passage of scripture in just a minute and we're going to talk about some of this uh, commentary here that Jesus taught his disciples to intentionally behave directly opposite uh, to the traditions that had been taught uh, that were uh, misinterpretations of and additions to the law and this is something that the Pharisees were notorious for. Uh, uh, they didn't uh, know Christ. Uh, they didn't know him in the pardon of their sins. They rejected him and his teachings. And so uh, what this caused them to do, uh, since they were uh, 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 religious individuals and, and it, uh, strict in terms of the Mosaic law, it caused them to misinterpret the intent of the law. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the law, but how they were using it uh, was the issue. And then they added to the Mosaic law. They added conditions uh, uh, and they put more emphasis and more pressure uh, 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 on the Jewish community because they were in authority to be able to do that. So the people had been taught uh, to love their neighbors and hate their enemies. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 43. So uh, Jesus uncompromisingly taught that his followers could not be selective in their love. And I, I would just tell you this. You're going to need the Holy Ghost because I, I can understand uh, that it is problematic for us to love those who do us wrong. Uh, uh, and you will not be able to do this in and of yourself. Uh, we certainly have to be transformed and we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work with us in a way that we might be able to do this and keep in mind the whole framework of this message uh, at least what I believe from Matthew's gospel and or Luke's gospel is to change the environment to change the culture to change the norms and so even in our day if we don't stop uh, and consider what Jesus is saying here we will continue to self-destruct we will continue to kill one another we will continue to uh, uh, undermine uh, one another and so you have a society now uh, where uh, we are in chaos because we are doing if we're not careful the same thing even as Christians as the world is doing we're handling our circumstances the same way that the world is handling them uh, and, and this is problematic in any society but but for the people chafing under the cruelty of the Romans this went against the moral ethics of the Jews so in their nationalistic view this teaching was considered uh, paradoxical if not immoral so however Jesus requirements for his followers are always radical and seem to go against the grain uh, of the status quo 
uh, along with reframing from hostile acts, followers of Christ must also express it. Must Christ followers, um, uh, we must love and, and express it in our words. Uh, we are also expected to bless rather than curse and pray for those who mistreat you. Uh, so one of the things that I um, over the years have talked to God about was this issue uh, concerning my enemies and, and, and the Spirit of God have worked with me over the years in a way that it is not a problem for me to go in prayer for my enemies. It is not a problem for me to call their names out if I know them uh, uh, and talk to God about their circumstance. Uh, this is the maturity of Christianity uh, that we have to be able to talk to God about not just the people that we love but those who are our enemies and we are required, we are commanded. Uh, uh, you will find this in uh, Matthew's Sermon on the Mount that we have to pray for those who despitefully uh, uh, misuse us. We have to pray for those who are doing us wrong and so uh, our society is characterized by dog eat dog. Uh, you kill my cat I'll kill your dog mentality. So uh, retaliation in the form of getting even is the norm rather than the exception. So Jesus taught and expects his followers to refuse to retaliate uh, uh, when mistreated by others. He provided examples from the lives of his followers to illustrate the practical application of the principles he, he taught. But before I get in a little bit further than this, I want to go over to uh, Romans chapter 5 uh, and I want to read this to us and I, just to put you on a path of a framework of understanding of where you are and uh, where where we were uh, prior to Christ coming into our lives and and the basis of our being able to love unconditionally uh, and, and to be able to do these things that uh, Christ is commanding us to do has to have a frame of reference uh, but in in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 the Bible says but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us so this is the framework uh, we should always remember uh, and keep in, in, in step with the Holy Spirit of where God have brought us from and so when we run into these situations in life uh, whether it is in the world or whether it is among us as brothers and sisters we need to quickly adhere to these guidelines or these principles that uh, that Christ is giving to us if we're going to be able to shape and reshape the culture uh, whereby we live. I also want you to look at 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 and then Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3. But this commentary goes on to say that the examples Jesus used as responses to physical violence are not to be taken literally but as an attitude of the heart that his followers are to demonstrate when negatively treated by others and you might say, well, Reverend, what can I do? Uh, well, we have to do our due diligence in adherence to the law uh, and, and the, the, the uh, principles um, of our legal system uh, that, that we have to engage uh, in an effort to, to, to mitigate the wrongs that we have suffered. Uh, in other words, we don't want to uh, uh, take matters into our own hands if you will uh, uh, you know uh, someone might say if I was you I would do this and that uh, but we have to take into account uh, that we are trying to uh, 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 reshape our society in a way that we demonstrate and we show the world how to engage and how to problem solve and how to handle things in a way that still speaks of our character 
as Christians, uh, even in, 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 in times where we want to argue or we want to, we want to engage and we want to be right and all of these kinds of things, we have to keep in mind that the devil is subtle. He is extremely crafty in these areas of, of, uh, uh, of our emotions. And so these things can quickly uh, get out of hand. And all of us have been there, and we have all uh, seen how this thing uh, uh, goes uh, in the wrong direction. So, but Jesus meant for his followers to re refuse to respond in kind, but to readily accept another such injury or insult if need be. Let me just say this. When we were in sin all of our lives, and, and, and committing our sins before God. Did you know we were offending him? Uh, uh, we were enemies of the cross, if you will. We were offending the very character and the nature of God uh, just because we were out of control. But now that we have become disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, it doesn't mean we are better than anyone else, but it means that, that uh, we should have a better quality or be of a better quality of individual in terms of how we engage one another. And this is the teachings uh, that Jesus is going over with his disciples and these hearers. And, and we have to actually put this in motion. Uh, this is not in the abstract. This is something that we have to actually uh, engage in. And so Jesus wants this done, uh, uh, if you will. He is not suggesting. Uh, he is commanding. And so we have to be able to demonstrate the kind of love to the world and in, in society uh, that we have received. I hope this is making sense to you today uh, but Jesus summed up his teaching regarding the appropriate heart attitude in, a, in response to being negatively mistreated in verse 31 treat others the way you wish to be treated the assumption here is that if we desire the very best spiritually then we should give that to others uh, even our enemies uh, strict obedience is required, uh, and this is the only uh, only possible when the believer's life is totally committed to God and is being transformed daily. I like that because uh, it's important to understand this won't happen overnight. Uh, we are constantly, we are daily being transformed into the image of Christ. I want you to look at Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 and also Ephesians chapter 5 uh, verse 18. So it takes God to help us. It takes God to, to, to transform us. Uh, and so when we see these weaknesses uh, in our lives that we are unable to do the things that God have required of us, then that's your best prayer. And so it's important that we uh, I, I, I find this to be very helpful today uh, in terms of uh, where we are in, in our society uh, that, that we are not adhering to these teachings. Uh, but we have to continue. It takes the disciples of Jesus Christ to continue to live out our understanding of the messages of Jesus Christ in a way that others might see that and 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 and, and want to become a part uh, of this messaging and of this reshaping of our culture. The question is asked here in the quarterly: Jesus commands us to show kindness to our enemies. What are some examples of of how he modeled this for us? And this is the scripture passages that I uh, shared with you at least some in part to help you understand that 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 God has uh, uh, loved us and he didn't have to do it uh, he has cared for us he has 
come into this world. He has sent his son into this world to save us from our sins. And we didn't deserve it. God loved us unconditionally. Uh, 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 and we'll see that a little bit later on in this passage. That he He is kind to evil men. Uh, all of the days that, that, that we had no intentions of serving the Lord. He woke us up. Uh, and he kept us uh, in every path of our do, uh, dealings and where we had to go. He allowed us to make it safely uh, to our destinations. He didn't treat us like we were treating him. Uh, we were not praying, but he was watching over us. Uh, we wasn't, we wasn't uh, uh, asking him to keep us, but yet he was keeping us. And so it's very important that we embrace uh, what God has done. Um, for us as we get into this second outline talking about emulate the father and this is this is uh, uh, by definition what it means uh, uh, we just have to emulate the love that we have received to our fellow man and we know that we have received it you and I have boasted about the fact that we have received this love we have told folk that we were saved and that we were sanctified and that we were filled with the Holy Spirit and we were gifted and anointed and all of these other things that we ascribe to but if it had not been for the love of God how would those things be so Luke chapter 6 verses 32 through 36 I want to read this from the NIV translation Jesus is still preaching here if you love those who love you what credit is that to you even sinners love those who love them verse 33 and if you do good to those who are good to you what credit is that to you even sinners do that and if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. Verse 35. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Verse 36. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. So again we have more emphasis and more challenging uh, statements here from Jesus to his hearers, to his audience. Giving them the principles by which to live by. Giving them practical application for the message giving them uh, tools if you will to shape and reshape uh, uh, the culture uh, that they were living in so don't be surprised if you have to feed your enemy don't be surprised if you have to clothe your enemy don't be surprised if God sets it up that you have to give uh, 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 and though you may not uh, uh, get anything in return uh, uh, but we ought to see about one another in a way and we ought to be concerned in and above what the world is doing and so Jesus gives some uh, practical examples here of what these uh, individuals uh, who are in the same circle uh, how they treat one another but sinners uh, here simply refers to all those who operate on normal human terms with regard to personal relationships exchange and and so forth everyone who does not conform their lives to the standards of the new kingdom that Jesus proclaimed lives this way uh, they love those that love them no more and no less so so we we should not be living uh, uh, um, as those who uh, have not been saved and who have not been uh, regenerated uh, again we were sinners uh, we were individuals who operated uh, on normal human terms 
uh, in regard or with regard to personal relationships and exchange and, and so on. And so that's how we used to be. But now we have come uh, into the knowledge of the truth and the expectations now are higher. Uh, 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 and Jesus is expecting us to implement or to emulate these same things that the Father has bestowed upon us. So Jesus summarizing uh, principle for demonstrating unconditional love is followed by a series of contrasts with the world's behavior and the behavior expected of his followers. So those in the world uh, who do not know or acknowledge God practice uh, some virtues. Jesus pointed out that they love those who love them. Uh, they repay good deeds done to them. They lend possibly even without interest. Uh, when they are sure they will be repaid and his followers if his followers emulated these shallow virtues they would be doing no more than those of the world do and that's um, that's a sad commentary and this is something that we desperately need now in in our culture and it was definitely needed uh, uh, in Jesus day but human nature uh, is the same uh, and, and so we're, what we are counting on uh, and what we're praying for is that men and women, and women will embrace the gospel at their heart at their core uh, that it might transform them and that they might be able to uh, uh, do the things that uh, uh, that Jesus is requiring keep in mind these are people that are following Jesus these are uh, he is speaking to uh, disciples. Uh, his followers are to continuously and sacrificially love, uh, do, uh, to do good, to lend to their enemies without expecting anything uh, in return. Uh, but living out this command brings with it his promise of a great, re uh, great reward and the honor of being affirmed as a children of uh, as children of God and so uh, you know if, if we're going to say uh, that we are saved uh, we should understand that that comes with a price uh, it, it comes with some sacrifice it comes with some heartache uh, and so if you think about Jesus on the cross praying for those who were crucifying him and praying for the thing that he knew uh, was really really going on with them and he simply says to his father to forgive them they are they don't know uh, what they are doing they are completely oblivious to the salvation keep in mind they have rejected the knowledge of God they have rejected Jesus Christ so uh, if you think about uh, uh, these individuals uh, and, and how blind they were to actually be kill killing, uh, putting to death the healer, the savior of the world, the one who was able to bless. They thought they were doing away with him and, and God allowed this to happen because he knew this sacrifice was critical for our salvation. He knew that the sacrifice of his son uh, was more than sufficient to save any individual who comes to Christ uh, for such salvation. So he allowed these things to take place uh, knowing that there would be a, a time in your life and in my life that we would need such a savior and thank God the process of salvation had been set in place had been fixed that you and I can now readily come to it and be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth uh, John clearly says this in John 3:16. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son it was the love of God that we have received it was the blessing of God that we have received and look what God did he forgave us of all of our past sins uh, he forgave us of our present sins and then he forgave us of the future sins and ultimately he is going to take us 
out of the way out of the very presence of sin and so this is this is a great salvation uh, that 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 uh, we have received and so in like fashion to those who need the love and those who need the prayers who now are doing things uh, to us that they don't know why and what they are doing and we can see the pity and the mercy that is required in that situation and, and you know I've asked this question over the years what child and this is you know respect to us as children of God what saint would attack another saint what brother would attack another brother or a sister attack another sister when we are all uh, children of God we in, when we are in the family of God so but but the world the world does something different uh, and so it, it's incumbent upon us to embrace these things and and do our due diligence to obey the word of God and pray for our enemies to love our enemies and there have been many times that uh, over my life that I've had to feed people that I know didn't care for me but they were yet hungry uh, I had to be a blessing to someone who had lied on me or had uh, uh, and, and we have to stay in position to be a blessing to sinners to people who are doing things uh, out of human uh, inclination uh, because of their normal practices without or being devoid of spirit uh, we have to continue to embrace these individuals because we can see uh, we should be able to discern uh, that they don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins and so if we can't uh, 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 and this is something that we have talked about over the years sometimes you won't be able to uh, uh, use a bunch of scriptures if you will you won't be able to say the thing or maybe the opportunity is not there uh, for you to go into a, a, a passage of scripture but think about the ministry of silence think about the ministry of being an example think about the ministry of being a witness without ever opening your mouth Think about the fact that you can let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think about that silent witness, if you will, or that, that living example that, that, that uh, tends to show uh, or, or what it is to be a disciple in addition to speaking about what a disciple is all about. So we have some options here uh, uh, in terms of loving one another and uh, embracing one another we can do things in such a way that we can uh, be just as impactful uh, 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 as as it was or as it would be if we said something uh, to the individual keep in mind we are trying to draw people to Christ and in and, and those of us that understand that we are saved you can clearly recognize how God treated you, how he conducted himself toward you, how he embraced you in a loving way, how you came to him and, 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 and he was able to soothe and to comfort what you were going through. He didn't cast you off, but he brought you closer to his love and he brought you closer to his, his kindness and his mercy and his grace. And so now we have run over with abundance of the love of God. And so what Jesus is saying to us simply is to emulate the Father. Emulate what you have seen, what you have been uh, 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 privileged. Uh, that the grace of God has come upon you in a way uh, that you have been blessed uh, uh, because of it. And so I hope, trust, and pray uh, that we have given you something to think about um, and that we've given you something uh, to help you in your walk with the Lord and I understand uh, I get it that it's not easy um, but if we would ask the Lord to help us uh, with our enemies and how to be a blessing and engage God in such a way uh, he would provide uh, uh, an example uh, he would provide for you an opportunity 
that you might be able to engage uh, none of us even if it's an enemy if you've read your Bible you know that the outcome of a sinner uh, that is apart from Christ and even if he is he or she is out of fellowship you know what that circumstance is like you know how miserable it is not to have a savior in your life and so that that should spark something from us to pray for these individuals that they have this relationship uh, that they have this uh, opportunity to embrace salvation and, and this is all evangelistic work here uh, 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 I know that uh, uh, Jesus had this in mind uh, uh, when he was preaching these sermons um, on the plain or on the Sermon on the Mount. I believe Jesus had discipling people on his mind, uh, even his enemies, uh, uh, that, 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 that we were supposed to treat them in a way that would bring them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what I believe. And I believe we are responsible for uh, making disciples uh, of, of these individuals and, and, and using the things that God have given to us to use that they might come into this relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. And they uh, may join this band of, of Christian believers in the love that we have received. So, as always, I want to stop here and I want to offer a word of prayer uh, for us today. We know we're still living in difficult days, difficult times, difficult circumstances. And we are asking God to continue to make his face to shine upon us uh, and bless us uh, even though we don't deserve it. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for such a great opportunity yet again to come and to be able to share your word. We hope and trust and pray, Father, that you are pleased uh, with the things that have been shared. We pray that it is a blessing to someone who is listening. Uh, we realize today that uh, uh, we, there are enemies everywhere. There are enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ and we are praying today Father in the name of Jesus that we would be the type of examples that you're calling for that we would embrace your teachings today we realize oh God that human nature is such that uh, that unregenerate walks right alongside that regenerate man and is looking for an opportunity to overtake uh, that that position that you have given us and, it, and and we just need to stay prayed up today and we need to draw closer to thee that you might help us in our walk with thee, that we might be able to uh, emulate your, your love toward us, to others, that they might see that you did love us and that you did die. You came into this world and you died for our sins that we might have this right to the tree of life. And we are just praying that, that many more be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We're praying for those who are sick and shut in. We're lifting up the bereaved families today in a very special manner. We realize, oh God, that we are we are in uncharted waters, but you've been this way before and you've brought us through many seen and unseen dangers. And we just thank you for all of the saints today. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're lifting up all of the leadership in prayer today, wherever these legislators are. We realize this virus is touching so many lives today. Father, we're certainly lifting up all of the first responders, those that are on the front lines uh, that are uh, facing uh, death each and every day that they might save lives. Father, we're praying for traveling mercies for those going to and from and those behind the prison walls. We lift them in prayer today. And Father, we just ask you to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We certainly thank and praise God and we hope, trust and pray that we've been a blessing to you and we encourage you to engage us in all our educational activities uh, through our church website uh, and that you might engage in every opportunity that you can to encourage yourself to be strengthened and to certainly continue to study God's word 
until God says no more. And so we are again until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.